Hello, welcome to my Sunday from Today is just a news update, just some headlines for today, this week, and um, things going on and locally too. Um, we have right now, I think Atlanta has been having a water main break since um, Friday. They've had this issue. It's an ongoing situation. Um, they're... Um, they're receiving like assistance for water because their their um, lines had broke and um, it started flooding the streets and stuff and so um, they're having this little water crisis right now and uh, it's only it's only gonna get worse if they don't you know put a cap on it and um, everybody's putting their little brains together trying to work things out and get the conditions back under control as we speak so hopefully they'll get that issue resolved because they have um, had to close like businesses and there's been street closures, there's been school closures and all kinds of things have been closing and st stopping, you know, um, because this has been going on. Um, so hopefully everybody in Atlanta, you know, um, I hope you guys... Um, I hope you guys get um, some water or you know they're on also they're on a boil water notice so like the people who do have water coming in um, that can um, open the line in their faucet um, they're advised not to eat or drink the water um, and if they do feel like if it's safe um, boil it please before you cook so that's just um, a thing right now so um, yeah, the boil notice is in effect until um, the local authorities deem it safe, and they will they will announce that. But um, in the world news, um, I think uh, a while a while ago we had this um, this thing going on in the Middle East, um, and I d I don't know like. A lot of people didn't really talk about it like you know and I wanted to just I just wanted to talk about it a little bit just you know because like it, it kind of reminded me of stuff that um, had happened you know kind of like things that we had gone through that I think went unnoticed so um, I wrote something uh, young men and women silenced with threats from an official so authoritative and ever so swiftly not with the decency of prior warning gave, and with such conviction, the aftermath went unnoticed in the world. For a moment, the moniker seemed to be picking up traction. But soon, more and more power came with age, as it, some sort of wise leader had the right to podium, you know, um, with some dub as seniority, um, so some people call this seniority when you get a certain age and you get like kind of like a like a privilege, like you have the right to inherit um, power and um, authority over the people, the, you know, that you govern or, you know, you oversee um, because, you know, you know them more than most people would. And um, because of the trust that they have in you. Um, you come to power, you know? The butcher, he was called. If you had a voice, were part of the youth who gave any concern to the world around them, but not woke enough to be considered entirely a threat, then that was the diet of this political giant, who soon became president of Iran. President Ricey didn't care about your age. Whether you survived his antics, backlash, and literal onslaught, slaughter, biased against anything that held opinion, not on his political agenda. So, um, President Ricey was dubbed the butcher early on in his political career. He, he was considered a threat to our youth, um, especially those who, um, you know, even if they came online and said something about you know, anything that was deemed political enough or um, even community-based or anything in the world 
going on around you. If you said something spoke up, soon you would find that this um, man, they called the butcher um, for a reason, would come and just swoop you up and you were you could have been put to death or you know a lot of people don't know um, and that's you know kind of a haunting thing that hap happened um, and it continued it, it, it didn't stop you know and I think it was like a pattern um, maybe um, that you know this particular uh, like an age group that he picked on you know um, if you want to call it bullying, you know, by all means, but it was, um, it was tragedy. He was on his way to cut ribbon on a, um, locks and dam that was, it was a new locks and dam that promised to continue industrial modernization, strengthening in this region. Um, the mountains were covered in fog. And a day prior, promised low visibility and conditions worsening for flights. He ignored it. The vintage helicopter was ready, and the president, four minister, four other staff on hand, and three crew members took off. Soon, search and rescue were scrambling. They needed specialized gear for the terrain alone. Russia volunteered to aid them. Several organizations were sent out. While media live streamed the world, took a seat anticipating the mission to soon be over. The passengers and crew tried to communicate and because they were injured, died waiting. Even though the mission to rescue was live, nobody knew until it was over that they held on. They held on that long long enough to hear the ambulance sirens, long enough to make a series of calls, and long enough to hear the rescuers closing in, but not one survived. That's including Iranian President Raisi. Five days of mourning ensued. They will hold an election soon. Official cause was a bad landing. The helicopter hit the mountain, lit up into flames falling into the dense forest below. The location made finding the wreckage that much harder. Kiz Kalasi is at the border with Azerbaijan, who also took part in the commissioning of the dam. So Azerbaijan is a, a country, and the president had been at the dam. You know, he had waited and um, for that helicopter to come and go, you know, for that opening of the dam. And... Um, Inaugur you know, it was like a whole inauguration and the media were already, you know, they were looking forward to that day. Everybody was looking forward to that day and it ended in tragedy with about nine people um, total dead. Um, but um, the search and rescue was really hard because of the, the fog, you know, and you could see it, you know, and I'm sure they noticed it taking off, but they ignored every warning and gave um, the pilot just, you know, he took off and um, as, as they um, had crash landed um, and everything was in fire and people were injured or what have you, um, the calls that were made did lead them to the, the crash site, the wreckage, the wreck, but because they had severe um, injuries, they just, you know, they just perished, um, during the wait, um, and it did turn to night, you know, and in the night, you know, a lot of, I think most of them had passed, um, so, so now they have to hold an election, and so, and speaking of elections, Mexico held election yesterday, making the most woke vote in history. Claudia Scheinbaum Pardo was apprenticed to former President Andres Manuel Lopez Abrador and promised to bring instant shine to the great country of Mexico. So they're still tallying up the vote, um, but Claudia Scheinbaum Pardo last night was celebrated as 
the um, elected official of Mexico uh, as president. And um, even still, there were two other candidates, including yet another female, Xochitl Galvez, and also Jorge Ma Magnez, proving party affiliation strong this year in the general election. She doesn't come without controversy. She once demoed chapel property and failed to support code enforcement, which proved to show during one earthquake that took the lives of 20 civilians during school hours. She is a feminist, married twice, single mom. She was highly advertised, highlighted, and constantly praised by former President Obrador. Her win is not at all surprising. So this is kind of telling of what kind of election they had. It was kind of a thing where she was meant to succeed Obrador. She was meant to um, be his predecessor because she had apprenticed under him and she had um, researched and studied everything she needed to know under the current president at the time. So um, for me, people like me, you know, who research these things, there's no, you know, there's no shock value added at this point. Um, you could have told me otherwise, and that might have, <laughs> that might have sent me. Um, this news that she's projected to win, that she's leading in the polls, that is no surprise. Um, they already celebrated her last night, and they haven't count. They haven't counted every vote. Of course, elections are like that. They are, can take, uh, I think, in India, they, I think they had taken two weeks one time. Um, and, you know, like a lot of times, India takes a long time because they have a large population. And it's kind of hard to get the votes um, together and count, counted. Um, but in the polls, um, as of today, they're still going through them. Um, it, it didn't say that she was you know, that she was already in the lead, but she's projected to win. Um, so she's already celebrated. She's already dubbed president, a first female president of Mexico. Um, so um, in weather, you know, um, West Coast is affected with 14,000 acres burned of wildfire. Evacuations were mandatory as only 50% have been contained. So um, the other 50% are yet to even be um, touched, you know, by the, by the emergency crew. So um, I strongly um, advise you to check your local um, and kind of heed the warnings and stuff because um, they can direct you to um, where you can be safer. They do have centers um, open, so you can check that too um, locally where you are. Um, if you don't have somewhere to go, they, they have some um, places open and available for you um, to take full advantage of. Um, so, uh, that's 14,000 acres of wildfire in California burning at this moment. So um, locally, here where I live in Ohio, we are experiencing fog, heavy fog. <laughs> we had um, really dense fog this morning. And some light rain pattern is noticed in the Midwest along with thunderstorms, which add to th that to already dangerous climate in the west coast so this thunderstorm pattern is pushing you know it like pushed all the way to the west so you know i think the weather affected um it can it can add to a disaster in california at this point with the wildfire um you know there's no telling so please stay safe everybody um that's all the news i have for today um I know it sounds like such easy math, you know, you get rain, you get fire, squash, you know, but it doesn't work that way. Sometimes it's, uh, you get storms, the wind gusts pick up and it leads to a jump in a, a spark, you know, and that is very dangerous right now for the, um, 
for the crew working there um, and the people, the residents and the people, you know, who are in, in the danger zones. So everybody, please stay safe and check your local. Um, find out what's going on in your areas. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you like this video. I um, hope you guys check me out again soon on my Sunday frump. Bye-bye.